Well, hello everybody. I hope that this works and that you can see me and uh, my screen. Uh, this is the first time that I'm streaming. So I hope everything will go well on a technical level. I must admit that I'm a bit nervous because yeah, I'm just talking to my screen and I'm watching a, uh, a stream of comments of uh, YouTube there. So please uh, give some feedback and let me know if it works. So I know that, uh, that everything is in order and it seems like it's working. Thanks, uh, Wavehack and uh, André. Okay, nice. Um, so uh, what I wanted to do uh, during uh, this session was to uh, explain uh, Laravel Backup Server. It's a package where I've uh, put uh, some love in recently. Um, and it's a package that can backup entire servers. So at Spassi, we have like, uh, I think over a hundred servers for our clients. We need to, uh, to backup those. And we used a piece of software called Backup PC for this. And it works quite well, but the UI is kind of nasty and it's really not much fun to work with. So I thought, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we just wrote it ourselves with a nice interface, uh, like all of our hobby projects. My thoughts was like, how hard can it be? And it turns out it takes yeah, some time to get it right, but it's fun code and I think um, there will be lots of things that uh, people can learn from uh, from this code. Uh, code. I uh, certainly learned a lot about thinking about this myself. Now, some of you might have seen that uh, intro movie that I've made about uh, Laravel backup server, but to get everybody on the same page, I'm going to uh, demo it uh, to uh, you again. Um, so let's first well, what shall we do? The browser or the terminal first? Yeah, I haven't rehearsed this at all. So it's pure raw and we'll see what uh, what happens. Um, maybe I'll just start with, with the terminal. Yeah, okay. So here we are in a directory where I've already have the package installed. So here is a Laravel application. You recognize this output. We're on uh, the uh, latest version of Laravel uh, 7, I think 7.6 got tagged yesterday or something. And I have the package here installed. So I can list all the sources that I want to, to backup. And right now I have one source, our company uh, company website, and there are no backups present. So let's take a look at a uh, what happens if we take a backup. So you can take a backup of a server with uh, backup and you give it the name of your source that you want to backup. You press enter and then it starts uh, backing up and it will actually SSH into our company server and it will uh, run a command that will dump the database to the file system so we can backup that as well. So Laravel backup server will only backup files. It doesn't do anything else. If you, everything that you want to backup must be on the file system and in order to uh, dump things on the file system, you can execute some SSH commands. So the backup is now complete. It's fairly quick. So uh, you see that uh, it is completed. If I now uh, use the list here, then you can see that we took one backup. We're healthy because the backup is very fresh. It will be unhealthy if your backup is uh, all, if your youngest backup is, low, uh, is older than a certain age, for instance, like a day or uh, something. So the SSH, uh, that happens indeed using the SSH uh, package. Um, yeah, we'll review the code of the backup process itself in a minute. So let's create another backup and see what, uh, what happens. 
So we're going to take another backup and this one should be fairly fast. Running backup and I hope my internet connection works and yes it does. And there we have it. We have another backup and let's list the backups again. And you can see here that the youngest backup size is about 250 megabytes. And, but here it says that the total uh, backup size is 500 megabytes, but we use only 250 megabytes. Uh, how does that work? Why isn't this equal to, to this? Well, the backup server uh, underneath it uses a tool called rsync. And rsync is a very smart tool. You can, uh, when you try to backup a, um, when you copy a directory using rsync, you can say, hey, compare everything with this other directory. And wait, I'll increase the font size a bit. I hope this is better. So when rsync sees that, hey, we are going to try to copy a file that I already have, it won't copy the file over, but it will put a hard link to the, to the other file. So um, you, you, you save an incredible amount of disk space here. Um, maybe it's simpler if I also let you see this in, uh, in the directory itself. So maybe, Papa, am I gonna do this? Uh, storage, maybe storage app backups. Uh, maybe that's something that is uh, worth showing as well. Let me go to uh, to Valet here and go to Laravel backup server. So this is the, the database scheme for that. We have the sources here. So this is the source that uh, that I just used. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Or I don't know if this trick works on a stream. You'll, you'll have to trust me uh, if I describe this. So here we can say for a source, this is the host, this is the, the user. These are those pre-backup commands. This is what we are going to include. So I'm going to include uh, the entire application, but I'm going to exclude some directories I'm uh, I'm not interested in. Um, so that is how you define a source and you can have as many sources as you want. I have just manually initiated a backup, but you can actually also define a backup hour. And we have like a um, command that dispatches scheduled jobs to create backups of each source at that hour. So it can be fully automated. And the destination is quite simple. A destination that is just uh, yeah, something with a name and uh, with a uh, Laravel disk. So here the disk is called backups. If I go to uh, PHP Storm, uh, it's here. Then in file systems, in file systems, disks, we have that backup disk here. So storage path app backups. So um, what were we doing? Ah, oh, yeah, we were going to this directory structure and you can see if I take a look in the finder, then that we see here the backups directory. We have a one here, and here are all the backups that uh, that I uh, that I took. There are a few more from uh, from a couple of uh, of other tests. And you know what? This isn't good that there are more. I'm just going to delete them and just start over again so that the example will be very clear. So let's um, oh. I'm not in the right directory anymore. So yeah, this is a live stream. Errors happen. I think it's fine. I hope uh, you think that is uh, fine too. So let's back up the, uh, the site again. Ah, wait. Of course, my database is not in order. Let's 
reset again so here now we have backups this should be empty so the database and the file system are now both empty and now i can just run the backup again Hup. that's a live demo for you Uh, let's see here. Does Valet do SQL connection as well? Is this a local? Yeah, this is, I'm just using my local uh, local uh, database here, and I'm using uh, using Valet. So, uh -uh. I already used Laravel backup in one of my applications. What's the different use case compared to Laravel backup server? Well, Laravel backup you install that uh, into an application. And then the application can backup itself towards another uh, destination to where you want to backup. Laravel backup server works the other way around. So you don't need to install anything in your application. Instead, you install Laravel backup server on a, uh, on a separate server and Laravel backup server will SSH into all your other apps. So it can backup multiple apps. I hope that is clear. So I've taken one backup, let's take another one. And now if everything is good, we should have uh, two folders here. Uh, no, this is just PHP storm, just waiting. Maybe this, maybe the terminal is a little bit more trustworthy in this case. So we have backups. We have one and I hope there are two directories here and sure enough, there are two uh, backup directories here. So what I want to show you now is how that you can spot those, um, those hard links that we use. So if I uh, SSH into, wait, let me first show you maybe this in the finer. So if I take a look at the size here, it's calculating the size, let's, do that here too. It's a little bit slower because I've uh, actually uh, also included the uh, node modules and the vendor directories, which I wouldn't normally do, but I've included them so you might see that taking a backup is really, really fast, even with many, many files. The node modules, directories, endless, we all know that. Um, so this one is uh, 200 gigs. This is also 200 gigs, but use with with hard links. This uh, 200 gigs uh, or 200 megabytes, sorry, is the same 200 megabytes as this one, and you can spot that with a uh, terminal command. If I uh, just go to one of these things here and I perform uh, this command to list all the files, you have this extra uh, row here. And maybe you should try to execute this one inside a directory uh, of your machine as well. And then you'll see that for files, this, uh, um, this number will most certainly be one for most of your files. I think for 99% of, uh, of the files. What does this number mean? This number means how many entries in the file system are pointing to the disk space that is allocated by this file. So this says to me yeah, that there is another entry in the file system that uses the disk space used by this one. So it's that yeah, is that Envoy file from, uh, from the other directory as well. And the file system is very, very smart uh, about this. If I were to delete one of these uh, backup directories, then this number will become one. The actual space won't be freed because if I delete this directory, because there's still another file pointing to this, the space will only be freed if this uh, goes to goes to zero and this is very nice because um, we save a lot of disk space because for daily backups there are not too many changes 
but um, we in in our file structure we still have like a full directory it's not like these are only the new files these are all all the files which if you are trying to restore a file it makes it very easy because you can just browse the file system it's pretty cool um yeah let's maybe demo it by just um creating maybe another backup so you can see that uh, that happening uh back back and here we are going to uh, pa -pa -pa, create another backup there we go and with any luck let's go this is now three because there are three backups and there are now three files uh going to uh uh, going to this disk space. Now let's see what happens if we maybe uh, add a file. So I'm going to not to my own server, but to our company server. And our site is in Spasi Currents. And let's maybe add a file here. Oh, there was already a file here from a previous demo. Um, maybe another one. Uh, hi, stream. How are you all doing? Like that. So we have an extra file now to be backupped. Let's backup again. And there we go. Let me read the comments for a bit while we wait. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, Brent is answering some some uh, some questions. Uh, that's good. Brent is uh, actually doing a live stream after this one. Uh, I'll share the URL after uh, after I'm done. Uh, he's going to talk about uh, the visual perception of code, which is an awesome talk. So stick around for that as well. So I've taken another backup and that backup has a, uh, has a new file to it. Let's take a look in the file system to see if, uh, if it actually worked. So let's first get the directory name is this one. This is just yeah, the, the timestamp of when the backup is taken. Let's go to that. Um, and here we have that high stream uh, takes a file. And you can see it is the first time that we've backed it. So it only takes like, uh, it, there's only yeah, one file in the file system that points to this disk space. But all the rest is now at four and it doesn't use any disk space at all. Let's take a look at the output of a server list here. And you can see here that our youngest backup size is 260 megabytes. In total, because we have four backups, uh, if we were to just add them all together, that's a gig. But actually on the file system, we only use 260 megabytes. Isn't, uh, isn't that fantastic? I, I really like that. Um, there are also a few other commands that I'm not going to, uh, to demonstrate now. We also have a monitor command and what that will do is if there are unhealthy backups, it will send out mails and Slack uh, notifications. So when is a backup uh, unhealthy? I've already uh, told that I think. One of the reasons is that the youngest backup is too old. So for instance, if your youngest backup is two days old and you want to have daily backups and something went wrong. Uh, so we're going to send out a notification or if your actual use storage is more than you, uh, you expect for every source. Let me show you that in the database. You can say what is a healthy uh, maximum storage. And that is about this use storage. And you can say, I want to have like uh, five gigs uh of uh, of backups if it's more this monitor command will send out a notification there is also another command uh clean which also uh, should be scheduled and what that will do is it will 
um, it will remove all uh, older uh, backups that you're not interested in. And we have a scheme called the uh, grandfather father sons uh, scheme uh, that is used to determine whether a, uh, a certain backup is old or not. Um, so that's all in the terminal. Uh, this package is actually already uh, released. Uh, you can find it on uh, our GitHub. It's named uh, Laravel Backup Server. But there is also another part that isn't uh, released yet that uh, we're still working uh, a little bit on. And that is the UI part. So everything that you uh, just saw via the terminal is also available uh, using, the, um, using the UI. And it's a very simple UI. We have sources, we have destinations, and it's a little bit crude now. Uh, this is all work in progress. Uh, the uh, final result will be much more polished and will probably look a little bit different. This is just yeah, uh, placeholder stuff, really. So you'll be able to uh, add destinations. And here we have just uh, a destination called Mersey MacBook, because that's the name of, uh, of my MacBook. And you can select a disk here, and we are just going to select the backup disk. So here we have the backups. These are the backups that we uh, just took. We can create a new backup. And yeah, this one happens via a job, and that uh, job is being queued. And in order to run queue jobs, I should start Horizon, and hopefully this one starts. And there it goes, running the backup, and it should be fairly fast. I hope so, otherwise there is something wrong. Maybe now I have time to read some comments. Uh, Tailwind UI components, yeah, we started with Tailwind, Tailwind uh, UI components, but my colleague Willem, he, um, uh, yeah, he uh, personalized that a little bit. I think Tailwind UI is good as a starting point, but it's good that you personalize the bit that people don't think, ah, that's just, they just took a template, you know, we want to polish uh, those things. Uh, when the UI package is ready, would you organize a contest kit giveaway? Well, we aren't sure yet what we are going to do with the, with the UI. Uh, are we going to sell it? Are we going to do it sponsorware? Are we going to do it free? Everything is on the table. If we do it in some kind of paid way, we'll certainly do a contest. And if it's free, yeah, then we don't need to do a contest uh, at all. So this backup is, uh, is complete. And you can see here that we have a beautiful live wire powered uh, browser here. So I can go into stuff. So this is a database. This is migrations. I can uh, download a single file just by, by clicking on it. So here is that, that table. Or I can just yeah, download an entire part of the application. Maybe I just want, I want to have uh, the resources directory. Then I'm going to uh, download it. And there it is. Uh, let me close this up. So if you download multiple files, it's a zip file, which can be opened. And here you can see that we have everything. And another cool tidbit that I want to show is that, let me close these windows, is that the um, backups themselves, when you, um, when you start a download, then a zip stream will start. So you don't need to wait for the server to create a zip and have the the server have like a large zip on the on the on the file system no we will immediately start streaming a uh, a zip file so we have some very large directories here uh, the the vendor directory and the node modules directory but will you notice that if i click download here um let me close this up that this immediately starts. If I wait a little bit, this should, uh, should update. And this is just the, uh, uh, the, the, the backend part, just streaming all the files to, uh, to the client. It, it will take a while. Ah, there it is. We have the whole application. If I unpack this, 
This also might take a while. I have a fairly quick MacBook here, but yeah, the note modules is just never ending. And here we should have the entire application. And that is how you can get your files back. Um, of course, you can also uh, just go on the file system of the backup server itself to just pick the files that you, uh, that you need for your restore. Um, probably we are not going to include any automatic restore functionality because in my mind the restore is always a little bit different. Sometimes you need a database, sometimes you need maybe one table, sometimes you need one file, sometimes you need a whole directory. And I don't know a good way of giving you a good interface for that. And I think it's also a little bit dangerous to have like your backup system going back to your original uh your original server to to change things i just want to don't to have that i just just don't want to have that responsibility so i've decided to not do any restore functionality at all there's a question uh, coming in am i right thinking this package is going to sit on a server and will be used to backup all of your other servers Yes, that is, uh, that is correct. So you probably have um, one server where this is installed and you use that um, to yeah, SSH into all of your other servers and it will backup the, um, uh, uh, the other applications onto itself. So for Spassi, we have um, our backup strategy is as follows. Uh, all our servers are on DigitalOcean and our first line of backups is the um, are the snapshots by DigitalOcean themselves. They they are performed weekly, but we also have like a server on Amazon, so on another cloud service provider, and um, this is on that server we are going to use uh, this this package, and we've coupled uh, a large block storage device, a large volume. Onto, uh, onto that EC2 instance. So we have yeah, like many gigabytes available and we are yeah, can just back up all of the other servers uh, to there. So that's, uh, that's the way that we do it. Hey, Arish, welcome to the stream. Oh, Nuno, am I <laughs> your favorite streamer now? That's, that's pretty good after, uh, after one stream or, or half a stream because this, is, uh, this was just my intro, uh, basically. I think that you're all here to uh, to see some uh, some of the code. So um, yeah, this is all the UI parts. I, if there are no questions anymore about the functionality, I'll just move on to uh, to the code part. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know. So this can be closed. Um, do I need this again? No, this can also all be closed. Let's clean up a little bit. I don't need the app itself anymore, but I want to, uh, to have the package here. So this is the, the package code. Let me clean it up. Oh, I can't see on my other screen. I can't see the comments anymore. Let me remove this. Okay. Code, code, code. Here we go. So, um, this is the, the package itself. Maybe something that I do to, uh, when, when I'm discovering a project or a, uh, or a package is first take a look at the dependencies maybe. So this is a Laravel backup server. What are we using? We're using some uh, Laravel components. We have some support for Slack here. We use our, uh, what is this doing here? Laravel flash. I think this one should be removed because there is no UI in this package itself. We use regex and we use SSH for those uh, SSH, for SSH into uh, into stuff. This is pretty interesting. We have a Docker package to uh, to test uh, this uh, package. We'll go into that a little bit later. And we have our test time package as well. Okay, let's move on and uh, maybe open up the source directory and. The bulk of the code is actually in tasks here. So I've uh, organized it in, into uh, to functionality. Um, and 
it the package can do a few things it can backup it can clean it can monitor and it can search oh i didn't um didn't show you the search hmm maybe i should do that because the search is actually also pretty cool um uh, not oh dear uh laravel, laravel backup server app here it is uh backup server list okay we still have some backups um mm -mm -mm. let's see what commands we have ah yeah okay so we have find files we can find files uh json files in our spacy.be backups and you can see here these yeah there are quite some json files because there are some in the uh uh, in the vendor directory seemingly as well so this is how you can find files you can uh, just use some uh, some mask here as well maybe I should uh, what should I try uh, maybe q.php that I'm only going to find one hopefully yeah and you can see here that all the backups contain uh, that file and it's in the config uh, directory um, you can also this is pretty cool uh, find content so you can look into all the uh, um, all the files of the backup and it is uh, crazy fast let's just take a look at where taylor is is mentioned in all of our backups and hopefully this works mm -mm, because i've polished the code a little bit and i didn't test it ah here it is yeah, so here you can see that uh, yeah, Taylor is mentioned quite a lot, and it's yeah in the composer in the license file of these uh, these backups. So let's take a look at uh, at if it if it actually works. So on line twi twelve of uh, this file, there should be Taylor. So let's go into that and take a look at line twelve, and sure enough, Taylor is uh, is mentioned here. What's powering the search uh, uh, functionality? It's a Unix command. I think it's uh, it's, it's just a, the find command, I think. And that's why it's so crazy fast. So um, all of these commands to just list the, uh, the size of the backups and the, um, yeah, and to search within it, it's all just basic Unix tools because we have every file on disk we don't need to go uh, to 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 s3 and make some uh, uh, some expensive api calls it's all local and that's why it's all so fast okay so that's the that's the search uh, functionality i want to show you that real quick okay backup let's go to the meat of uh, of the package here um maybe let's start with commands so the readme of the package instructs you to um uh, schedule this command dispatch perform backup commands and here we are going to uh, create a backup scheduler and the backup scheduler is actually uh something that i've put in place for people that want to have like uh, very customized backup schedules uh, let me take a look at the default implementation so the default implementation is that it will say that it needs to be backup if the hour is equal to the backup hour of the source but in the um, config file uh, where would it be scheduler scheduler here you can just use another scheduler if you want to Let's go back to the command. Here we are just going to all the, the sources. We are going to filter out the one that should be backup now. And for those uh, that should be backup, we are going to create, uh, we are going to execute this action. And an action is um, yeah, just something to uh, centralize code because creating backups will be done uh, from, from different places. Here we are going to dispatch the commands, but to manually uh, fire off a, 
uh, or start the backup, we have another job because this one will actually um, uh, pa -pa -pa, under the hood uh, create a job. The other one, the one that you see me use in the terminal is create backup command. So this one has a few niceties. It takes an argument and if uh, that argument is wrong, it will it will error. But eventually it will also use uh, that, that same action. But this time it won't be queued because I want to have the output of that action in my terminal. With this command, uh, the other one that is scheduled, you don't have any output in your terminal because a, uh, a job will be, uh, will be queued. Okay. Uh, create backup action. What happens here? I'm, am I going to explain this one or not? Mm, 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 mm. Maybe later, because I want to go to the bulk of, um, of the package. So what are we going to do? The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to create a backup with a status of pending. I don't know if you've, uh, you've seen it. Let me uh, open Valet one more time. Um, I'm doing this on my other screen and I'm dragging it into a screen that you can see. We also have a backups table and here all the, the information around, uh, around backups is. So here you can see what the status is uh, on what disk name, uh, what is the path on the file system, uh, the output that rsync uh, gave us, the speed and so on. Okay, so we're going to create uh, that record uh, first. And then we are going to uh, yeah, create a job and uh, depending on whether we uh, want to queue or not, we are going to dispatch it or uh, immediately execute it. But the meat here is in um, the perform backup job. And this is like the, the core of, uh, of the package. And uh, Nuno, we're not going to do a final here, sorry, <laughs> to, each, uh, to each his own. Um, mm -mm. Let's see. Ah, yeah, okay. So the backup process itself is not that complicated, but there are some steps that need to be performed. And in an initial version of the package, this class was quite long because I had functions here for, uh, for, these, for these things and it just went on and on. And how I like to make a class a little bit uh, cleaner then is to just have separate classes for the separate steps. And then we can just go over these steps and, and execute them. So. It makes it very readable to what the backup process does. We are going to ensure that our source is reachable so that it certainly exists. We want to know that the destination is okay, that we have a Laravel disk. We want to know where are we going to, to backup uh, to inside of our Laravel disk. We are going to determine the directory there. Then we are going to uh, perform these pre-backup commands, which can be used to uh, backup the data or dump the database of the server you want to backup on disk. So these pre-backup commands, they are being executed on the server you wish to backup. Then we are going to run the backup and then we are going to perform some cleanup uh, with the post backup commands. And then we are going to calculate the size of the backup that we just took. So these are the tasks and these are just, yeah, the, the class name of the tasks. Here we are going to instantiate them and here we are going to execute them with the backup uh, that is the, the subject of uh, this, this job. So it's, it's pretty clean. If all goes well, then, uh, then an event will be fired and there's like a notification system listening for these events. I'm going to uh, explain that later. And if it doesn't uh, all go as planned, then we are going to mark that backup as failed. That is just uh, updating the status to failed and putting something in the log. And we are also going to uh, fire off an event. 
Okay, so that is this this um, that is this job, um, and this is yeah really the the heart of the package. Okay, this is a good moment for me to read up with uh, with the comments here. Mm -mm. Is this like a custom implementation uh, of the pipeline better? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. Do the servers you are backing up need anything special installed in them? Do they need to be Laravel applications you are backing up? Are there server requirements? Well, the only server requirement is that rsync should be installed onto uh, your server. And that's basically it. I think it's rsync first, uh, version 3 that we use, which has been a standard for a couple of years now and is available on most uh, Linux distributions. And that is like basically the only requirement uh, that we have on the server that you want to uh, back up. A requirement on the, for the server where you want to install this package on is that it should also have a, um, rsync installed because those rsync uh, binaries they talk to each other they need to be able to talk to each other it's quite nice that um, they have highly optimized communication between them so if they uh, if there is a um, directory that you want to sync they are first going to exchange uh, like hashes of the content that they have and if the hash is the same then uh, the receiving end knows I don't need to copy it because I already have it here. So that's why both sides need the have the uh, rsync uh, installed. Feedback. Uh, I think you can make both the menu and the font uh, twice as big. So anybody else uh, having problems with, uh, with the font? Here it is quite big. Is this better? I'm going to continue and I hope that it's uh, that it's better. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to make uh, make sure that every time I go into a file, I make it a little bit bigger. Um, okay, ensure source is uh, readable. Uh, active window font was good, but I think you mean the font of the sidebar and the PHP Storm UI. Yeah, but this isn't really that interesting to, to see. If you can just see the code, that's, uh, that's fine. Okay, so ensure task is reachable, our first task. So you can see that we have uh, some tasks here, and this one implements the backup task, and the backup task is just a, uh, an interface that just says, hey, you must execute something on a backup. So, um, what are we going to do in ensure uh, source is reachable? We are going to log that we are doing this. Uh, maybe that's also something nice to see. In the database, we also have a backup log and you can see here that we uh, have it in the database. So in our UI, we can give you the exact info uh, that is uh, that is needed. If we were to just log things to the, the textual log of Laravel, we wouldn't be able to filter it out and show you the log in um, in uh, in UI. But here you can nicely see for this uh, backup we have uh, we have these uh, these log items. All right. So how are we going to ensure that the source is reachable? Well, we are just going to execute an SSH command. Uh, on the um, on the server that we are going to backup. So I think having the who am I command is also a requirement. Maybe I'll change this to, to something else. Uh, this was just uh, the easiest uh, thing for me. Maybe it's also nice to see uh, that executes SSH commands, uh, how that is done. So uh, let's go to our source model. And these are actually the only models that we uh, that we use here. I think I can delete the user model because the user isn't isn't used here. Um, mm -mm. Let's see, executes SSH commands. Here we have it. And here you can see that we use our SSH package. So if I click on here, then you can see it's uh, the spacy SSH uh, package. We are going to SSH in with the user of uh, this source, we are in the source uh, model here, to this host, we are going to use the port that is defined, we are going to use the private key, and then we are going to execute that command. So it's 
it's really nice and tidy. Um, let's go back to ensure source source is reachable. And yeah, if this process is, is not successful, then the source is not reachable and we are going to um, give an exception. And you can see here that we have uh, like nice static exceptions here that have like nice messages. And those message, messages are being built in here. So I don't need to build messages here. This is fairly readable. Backup failed because the source was not reachable. And because this uh, exception is thrown here, the other task won't be performed yet. We'll uh, catch it here. We'll mark it as failed. And we uh, uh, sent out that event. That is, uh, that is how it looks. OK. Second one, ensure destination is reachable. Yeah, it's it's fairly the same thing, but actually we are going to um, uh, use the backups destination here. We are going, going to call reachable on that. So let's take a look at what reachable looks like. And here we are just going to try to execute uh, the disk. And let's go to that. And here we are just going to try to new up a, uh, a yeah, I think it's a file system instance using that disk name. And if that doesn't work, uh, yeah, we're going to catch the exception. We are going to return false and reachable is no, there's, uh, there's something wrong. Then we are going to say destination not reachable. And then we are going to say the destination disk, disk name could not be reached. That's how that one works. So with the source reachable and the destination reachable, we can continue. We are going to determine the destination path. So here we are going to create a directory on the disk where we are going to put the backup in. Um, and yeah, it's fairly straightforward. We are just going to uh, grab the directory uh of the destination itself so this is like the root directory of the file system disk and i don't know if i have already mentioned it but between the lines i have i think that disk that you're using to backup to that destination that must be a local disk we can't go to s3 because we don't have our sync available there and we can't to come to all that nice uh deduplication stuff um let's take a look yeah here we are going to add that timestamp of the backup to it we are going to make the directory and we are also going to uh, uh, save that path into the backup um let's do another question first could you talk a bit about your work process of making a package like this? How much do you map out before you start the code? Um, that's a good question. Mostly all backups are created because I feel some pain somewhere else. And in this instance, uh, the pain was felt because the current backup solution that we used was, uh, was really not not nice to use it had a, a crappy ui it wasn't it was written in a language that we don't understand it was a solution that we can't update right and like many other packages uh, the thought was yeah how hard can it be to uh, to do this ourselves i already knew rsync and its capabilities and mostly i start with tackling the hard of the problem for a package like this. So I started with this one a couple of months ago, I think. And the first thing that I was trying to do is just using that rsync command to get the um, to get the deduplication running, then build some uh, PHP layer on, on top of it. So I shouldn't use rsync itself, but I can just use a artisan command uh, then sources came there so I could say, hey, backup this source for me. And that's a little bit how it grew. Mostly I start with like the, the core functionality first, 
uh, because I, I, I need to know if I can solve that in a good way before I start building all of the infrastructure uh, around it. What if you use R clone instead of R sync so that we can get a direct connection to R sync B uh, and B2 uh, style cloud storage access? I've uh, taken a look at uh, R clone uh, as well, and I couldn't get it uh, running as fast as R sync is running now. But the reason why I um, open sourced the core part is to have yeah people people like you uh, Alex can that can uh, tell me about these things and maybe contribute to the package so that it would be would be possible. I've also not investigated that too hard because for me uh, using like a very big local disk to store all of my backups on. It's, it's just enough. It works for me. And that's also something that is yeah, ingrained in my, uh, my work process. And that is that I only want to solve stuff that, uh, where I need a solution for. Uh, I'm not going to create things that I'm not going to need myself. But that being said, the ability to backup to S3 <laughs> with some kind of deduplicated way would be awesome. If you want to invest your time into uh, adding that to a package, I mostly uh, mostly welcome that. Okay, with these questions answered, let's uh, go further. Perform the pre-backup commands. And this should one should be pretty straightforward now because we already know that we have some um, SSH, SSH executing abilities here. So here we are just going to execute those uh, those commands. Um, and am I going to go through this all? Yeah, maybe if we don't have commands, we're not going to do anything. Here we are. Let's go back to here. We have given it that label. These are the pre backup commands. So we can, oh, wrong direction. So we can have a label and lock that we are performing the pre backup commands. Now we are going to execute those SSH uh, commands. If they were not successful, we're actually going to fail the backup because maybe in these pre backup commands, you wanted to dump the database and the database doesn't, didn't get, get dumped. That's reason enough to fail the entire backup. And otherwise uh, we are uh, going to uh, lock the output of that process to the lock. Um, so that's pre backup commands. And with all of this in place, we can finally do what we want to do, run an actual backup. I think the stream is already like an hour on the way or something. And we're only now getting through this code. Uh, if you're still here, thanks for, uh, for sticking around. So here we are going to, uh, run the backup. What I want to do in execute is to have it very easy to read what is going on. I didn't want to have any R sync magic happening here. So for people that are reading this for the first time, that is very easy to understand what, what happened. So, uh, I often use like pending objects, uh, to configure, uh, some behavior that I want to run later. So here I want to create a backup. Oh, my trackpad is very low. I hope uh, my trackpad will, will hold it. Otherwise you'll see my beautiful B right back screen uh, in, a, in a few minutes. So uh, the pending backup from the source location, we are going to uh, include uh, exclude some things. We are going to backup to the destination location. We are going to use this private key file. This is an interesting one, uh, report progress, which uh, gets a callable. And what does that do? Uh, it uh, will call handle progress on the backup and handle progress. That is just uh, logging the output of the backup to the backup log. And it's basically what it, uh, what it gets is rsync output. And we uh, also get the transfer speed, the actual transfer speed uh, out of it. In our UI, 
in the final UI, you will uh, get to see uh, how fast the copying process is working while it's busy. I think for large uh, backups that might take some time, it gives a lot of confidence if you see the transfer speed uh, changing a bit so that you know that it is, uh, that it is still busy. Okay, uh, 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 here, this is an interesting one. If we have a, uh, uh, if the latest, nay, here we are going to get the latest completed backup. And if we have such a backup, then we want our backup to be incremental from the path of the previous, a, um, um, from the previous backup. And then finally, we are going to run the backup with the configuration and for that backup, uh, for that backup model. So run backup is just below here, but some people might ask, why do, didn't you do this directly? Because this code is a little bit messy because there are some moving parts and I want to have like a sort of recipe, uh, function here where people just could see like, this is like the summary of how all that is going to happen. So here we are going to, uh, in run backup, the first thing that we are going to do is get the backup command for the spending backup. And I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty details of it all, but what this one will do in the end is it will get the final rsync command that we, uh, that we need to execute. So here you can see yeah, all these placeholders of, uh, of the command. I see a question in the corner of my eye. Uh, is the UI using uh, WebSockets or Ajax spawning? Well, it uses glorious Livewire. Uh, I've been uh, toying around with Livewire lately and I think it's pretty amazing. Uh, I don't know if I'll go into the Livewire components um, in this stream because uh, it's already taking a little bit longer than, uh, than I thought here. So maybe I'll do a follow-up stream on how the UI is, uh, is built. Okay, so we were here getting the, uh, the backup command. Um, pa -pa -pa. And here, yeah, there's like a... Uh, oh. <laughs> my girlfriend is asking if they are already uh, uh, if it's already safe here not yet I have to wait a little bit more um, mm -mm -mm. where were we ah yeah okay so we have that command and let's take a look and then we use a symphony process to uh, to run that command and you can see here that we use that progress callable here. And this is like the, uh, the first argument of the, uh, of the process. And in a symphony command, this will get called whenever there is output while the process is running. And that's, that is how we get output out of the command while it is running is just, uh, using symphony. Pretty cool. So this is how we create a backup. Mm -mm -mm. So a lot of code to create an, uh, an rsync command. Then we are going to perform the post backup commands, which is quite easy. It's just the same execute the, uh, the backup commands for this backup, which ones the, the post backup commands. And then we are going to calculate the backup size and we are going to just use a Unix utility uh, on the full path to get, uh, to get the size. Uh, there are some other parts in the code uh, that calculate the real backup size. Um, the real backup size, that is the size that is being used on the, actually on the disk. Uh, so it might be zero if everything is deduplicated, but this one gives me the regular, uh, regular size of, uh, of the backup. Uh, 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 um. Let's go back. So that's calculate backup size. And there you have it. That's all the magic that's needed to, uh, to create uh, a backup. Maybe I'll show you one thing more. And uh, if you want to see some other things, now would be a good time to just let me know in the chat which parts that you're interested in, and I'll uh, try to explain those. 
While those questions are coming in, I'll show you the notification part. The notification part is actually quite uh, quite easy. Uh, I use like this pattern in a couple of packages. So in in the rest of the code base, nothing is done for uh, for notifications. Everything for notifications lives here, and we just um, listen to um, to all uh, all yeah event classes here. So these are all the events that uh, that the package sends out. And what it does here, it will subscribe to all those events and it will determine the notification for that events. And here we are just going to yeah, do some uh, string manipulations with the namespace of the event. And we are just going to yeah, uh, get the matching notification there. So if we can find a notification class, then we are going to return the notification uh, pa, 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 pa. And then we are going to notify, uh, yeah, the notifiable, it's called here. The notifiable and the notifications are things that can be um, uh, configured in the config file. So the notifiable, that is just a class that reads the, uh, the configuration. So we'll use the mail... Um, um, configuration from the config file. So we'll send the mail to this one. We'll use these uh, these variables. And for Slack, it's just the same. And you can even just overwrite the notifications if you want to um, if you want to customize those uh, those notifications. Um, is there something else that I can explain quickly? Because I have already been busy for an hour now. No, I'm going to call this uh, this a day for uh, for the things that I wanted to say. Let's see if there are any questions. So, how do you know so much stuff for Unix commands and rsync? Well, to be honest, um, uh, I've uh, I've knew of the existence of rsync before, but I um, never really used it yet. And yeah, it's just playing around, just uh, taking a look at uh, how, uh, yeah, what the documentation is, just experimenting with some uh, some parameters. And for the Unix commands, it's just the same. It's just um, just trying stuff uh, stuff out. Uh, a little pain that I had with researching the Unix command is that they are slightly different for uh, Unix-based machines and uh, macOS. Based, uh, based machines, so there are some, um, yeah, some some ifs there. Maybe if I can find, pa -pa -pa. quick one, pa -pa. Uh, is it called Darwin? Yeah, here it is. So Darwin, that's the code name for uh, for macOS. And here you can see that we have a slightly uh, all our command if we're on Mac versus on uh, on Unix or Linux. Um, if you're using Windows, you're on your own. I didn't uh, didn't research that at all. So I think that is all I want to say about this uh, this now. I know it's already a lot. You can um, see the. Um, the package already on GitHub. It's on github.com slash spasi slash Laravel server backup. Like I said, that package uh, will be free. It's all, it's already open source. Um, the UI package, we still need to, uh, to put in some work to make it really polished. Uh, and yeah, we're deciding if we should open source it, if we uh, should sponsor where it uh, or, or just made something, something paid of that. Uh, we haven't made a decision uh, about that yet. Now, if you if, if you like uh, what uh, if you did like what you have seen, uh, consider sponsoring us on uh, on GitHub. The URL is uh, github.com slash sponsor slash spasi, I think. Uh, I think I enjoyed the stream. There didn't, uh, there weren't any 
two big fallouts here, I think. And I enjoyed, uh, and I hope that you enjoyed it as well. So uh, with that being said, I'll, uh, I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.